Okay, so the, the observer. <clears throat> I might uh, do a slightly different tack on the observer. <clears throat> so, um, lots of things are experienced. Uh, lots of things are experienced uh, in life. But what, 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 what does experience originate from? And I would say uh, experience originates through um, identification or you could say identification or attachment or interest or meaning or value. Anything that's held within experience that is, is identifiable <coughs> or, uh, or is interesting or is meaningful or has some kind of value creates experience. <coughs> and what, uh, what has no value, has no meaning, uh, has, there is no attachment to, uh, there is no association with, um, uh, uh, there is no experience of experiencing that. So, so, so what we're going to do with the observer is see from our own experience <coughs> what it, <coughs> you could say when you start, sorry, I have a bit of cough today. <coughs> when you, um, <coughs> When you, uh, whatever you're experiencing right now, whatever it is, um, then there has to be some level of attachment or some level of identification or some kind of value. Because everyone's like uh, going all kinds of places all the time and they're not noticing most of what's happening. Um, so like for a person, for a donut addict, you know, like... If there was donuts, you would notice the donuts. But for someone who's not a donut addict, you wouldn't notice donuts the whole day. So when there's no meaning or attachment or association or value or identification or any kind of projection associated with it, it doesn't exist for you. And that's quite literal. I mean, <clears throat> everyone here is coming up with different, <clears throat> different egos which have different things that they're programmed with which have meaning or which create interest. So, like, uh, you know, I might not notice a bottle of vodka, but I might notice a chocolate cake, whereas for someone else it might be totally different. Um, and also, if you start to do advanced uh, spiritual practice, um, you start to be able to, you're releasing more and more attachments, more and more things. If you do the Course of Miracles, more and more things have been rendered meaningless. As you look around the room, you know, uh, my feet, my foot is meaningless, uh, the camera is meaningless. So we're stripping, or if you cancel your beliefs, or God did not create. Um, uh, lesson 14, of course, the miracles. God did not create war, so it's not real. If you, you know, God did not create conflict, so it's not real. God did not create poverty, so it's not real. As these things, you know, uh, God did not create cancer, so it's not real. So as these things sort of, as this... Um, as this identification or this attachment, as the, uh, Lesson 14 says, you know, we have our personal belief systems and there's collective belief systems that we all buy into. But on, a, on an individual level, as you just release that, it no longer exists. So, so in truth, you could say Lesson 14 could be literal. Like if God did not create it, or if it doesn't exist in the infinite, then... Um, then you can, you can dissolve the attachment, you can collapse the meaning, you can collapse the value, you can collapse the identification, and therefore it ceases to exist. Because actually, in truth, God did not create it. You could say it's an ego, or it's, a, it's something that's created out of separation, to experience uh, separation in the world. <clears throat> and so, all, all, so what we're going to do with the observer um, is... And I always use this mug, and I should probably use... I can use a pen. I'll use something different. Don't use a mug every time. So, a pen. Like, uh, but a pen is like... Now, if... you know, <clears throat> Actually, a pen is an interesting one, because it's quite neutral to most people, unless you're a pen addict. In which case, you know, you'd probably, like, photograph it and get a lot, a lot of problems around pens if I hold pens up. But for most people, <clears throat> it's like... <clears throat> if I say, like, is anyone in the room... I'm on camera, but if I said to anyone, are you a pen? Like, no one's going to sort of argue with me, usually. <laughs> there might be someone in a, in a hundred years that might be a pen addict or something. But, 
you know, like everyone is like there is observing of the pen, you're not the pen. So when there's something meaningless, <clears throat> if it was 100% meaningless, you wouldn't, you wouldn't even notice it unless I sort of said there is a pen here because it'd be too uh, uninteresting uh, to sort of hook into. And with something that's relatively meaning, meaningless, um, there's detached observation. You know, there's detached observation. There's space between the thing and what you are. So, and this is the thing to do with all things. So it's like, you know, uh, <clears throat> um, Ramana Maharishi, self-inquiry. What is the nature of myself? You know, and most people would, I think, agree that they are not the pen. Okay, so we can inquire, um, you're not the pen. But what about thoughts? Now, here's the thing. I mean, like, um, when something is very identified with or has a lot of meaning or a lot of value or someone's addicted to, um, then this thing of detached observation starts to collapse. And there, there, there comes <clears throat> almost like an enmeshment. <clears throat> like people start saying, I am the pen. You know, or they're confused. Uh, they're, you know, or you, you say, well, actually, you're not the pen. You're the observer of the pen. And they go, well, you know, no, actually, my experience is I am a pen. So that's what happens. So another big addiction is thinking, thoughts. <clears throat> and this is like an experiential thing, because thinking is one of the big ones. And it starts off in The Course in Miracles, all my thoughts are meaningless. <clears throat> And it gives you nice little exercises like, you know, my thought is as meaningless as the carpet in this room, or my thought, my next thought is as meaningless as the plant on the windowsill. So it's just stripping the meaning. But, um, so observing. So be aware, if, you, if one is aware of thoughts, like, uh, is there observing of thoughts? And that's a spiritual, that has to be like a, an experience. Because if you go to your thinking and identify with your thoughts and try and understand the question, then you won't, ex you won't experience that which is observing thoughts. Also another way, this is the thing that I do when I'm doing the observer, is like, if I go to the observer of thoughts <coughs> and, and there's still experiencing of thoughts, that means I'm in the interested observer of thoughts. Okay. So oh yeah, there's, uh, there's observing, there's witnessing of thoughts passing by and there's a space that opens up. And, it, and, it, and there's an awareness that one isn't the thoughts. There's a deeper inner space of observing or witnessing the thoughts. But still the observer seems to be quite fascinated with the thoughts passing by. So then I used to use, oh yeah, there is an observer and it's witnessing thoughts, but is there an observer of this observer? And then when I do that, then the thoughts start to disappear. Because it's like, well, that observer is not even interested. And when something, when there is observa observation and there's no interest in the thing, the thing disappears. The next thing is the body. Now, the body is, or, well, we can take it stage back. Sometimes people have aches and pains and, uh, like, stomach problems or uh, tight shoulders or whatever it is. If that's, then you can go to those. But... You know, like tight shoulders or a little or stomach ache or whatever it is, that is an object. You know, like a, a ball in the stomach of tightness is like it's got a shape. So, what observes the shape? Is the observing of that shape the shape? You know, like if I hold a mug, the observer of the mug, is it the mug? Or is the observer something that's behind the mug, observing the mug. So if you've got like a, a knot in the stomach or you've got tight shoulders, what's observing the knot in the stomach or the tight shoulders? <clears throat> and if there's observing, then is there a, an observer of that observer? So that's the way, uh, when you start to collapse, and so when there's detached observing of something, when that space opens, it's, it starts to dissipate. You know, because it's like the identification, the interest, the attachment is what creates the almost the experience that you are the thing. But as you get into the detached observing, there's a recognition those you're not. And this is an ex this is like an exercise in surrender. Because the you know, what observes the ego? Well the ego doesn't observe the ego. So one is now in in the state of the infinite. 
the infinite is not the ego and so that invites in the infinite energy to wash out that which is habitually uh, identified thoughts or knots or or whatever it is tension in the shoulders next one is like most people may have a an awareness of their body shape you know oh this body is sitting in this location and it just feels like oh i, I can sense where my feet are and how tall it is but that's a shape that's an object just like a mug but what observes the body is there something here that's witnessing the body that's not the body? Is, you know, is there a detached observing of the body which is not the body? That's a spiritual experience. Don't, don't, don't try and think, rationalize it because you go back into your thinking. So then that's, uh, that, that brings into the course thing, I'm not a body, I'm free, for I'm as God created me. So, noise. I mean, you don't have to listen to my voice, but um, sounds. If you go to the observing of sounds, so it's almost like something is interested in sound, but there is also an observing of sound, and then there is an observer of the, uh, of the interested observer of sound. So if you go deeper into the observer and let go of being interested in noise or sound, See if sound exists as you go deeper within and let go, just almost like letting go of being interested in noise or sounds or voices. A location as well, if there's a sense of location, is there something that witnesses location that's not interested in location? So is the observer of location located? Is the, is that which is the detached or the uninterested is probably a better word, interested observer of noise, does that experience noise? The detached observer of thoughts, do thoughts exist? Does thinking exist in that which has no interest in thinking? Is there, is there something here that witnesses the body and is there, a, is there an observer which has no interest in the body? And does the body exist in experience in that observer? And the, the last one I usually talk about is time. <clears throat> Sometimes there's a, can, especially in Western societies, there can be a sense of time, almost as if there's something like trying to count seconds or minutes or something. But is there something here, is there like a detached observing which has no interest in the passing of time or the tracking of time? or the awareness of time. So as you go, so this is the query. So wherever you are, in whatever state of witnessing, and if something wants to hook back into the thought or the body, is there something, is there an observer of that observing, that wanting tendency to hook back in? So you can catch these things going deeper. So what we're going to do now is have five minutes of silence just to go and practice this oneself to go deeper and deeper and see if one can let go of identifying with whatever is coming up in experience.